Hey, what's up everybody? David here from Tough Guys TV. And on this episode, we got a new TV stand type thing for our bonus room where the kids hang out a lot. And uh, basically we're just trying to kind of coast by until we move because we're gonna be building a new house soon. And uh, anyways, my wife found a great deal on this unit here and we wanted to put it together. The TV actually isn't gonna sit on it. We have the TV mounted on the wall, but we needed some storage and this kind of has a cool farmhouse look to it and it had great reviews. So I figured why not do a review or a unboxing and a build for this unit in case you are interested in buying it. Um, this brand is active on social media as well. So I thought, why not try it? So anyways, that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. As always, uh, social media links will be somewhere around here for you guys if you wanna see more of what we do. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel and uh, let's get right into building this. We are inside the kitchen, probably thinking that's a weird place for me to put this thing together, but it's gonna be going in this room in the back and there's nowhere to put it together back there really and the dogs are back there and it would just be a disaster. So we picked the kitchen because we've got a big open area to put it together. So we're just gonna start by opening up the box and seeing what's inside and seeing what it tells us to do first. Okay, here's a quick overview of the box. Looks like the model number there. Name of the company here is Twin Star Home. And again, they are active on social media so I'll have those guys linked here if anybody wants to see the other products that they make. And the first step is we just crack this box open and see what's inside. Right, we've got this spread around here in the kitchen. It actually ended up being a perfect area. I had places to lean all the parts. Um, first impressions, I mean, it's it's one of those particle board type things that you buy, but the quality of it feels really good. Everything feels nice so far. Built in nice little, little racks and tracks and everything else, and uh, all the holes seem clean. I had nothing that was broken inside of my package, even though the box was pretty bad. They had lots of stuff in there to, to just help keep it safe. Um, and there was a hardware box, which we'll open in a sec. And then of course the instruction manual, which I will take a look at and be referencing to while we put this thing together. So just wanna do a quick overview of the parts. Everything looked good. Um, I do really like this finish. Uh, the finish on here is actually really cool. It's kind of distressed with like speckles of paint. And then the wood finish on this part actually feels really nice as well as looks cool. And again, you know, the quality of it, it's it's not gonna be the same as, you know, having a real <laughs> real pieces of wood, you know, real plank top, but it it is really great for what it is and for the price. So take that for what you want. Here's that hardware box and let's open it together for the first time. There's a couple of wood blocks in there. We'll come back to that or below and uh, tipping over a furniture. So this is probably whatever you would use to attach it to the wall um, in case your kids like pull it over and it crushes you or your dog or your children. That's probably good. This is what I call a fun bag. And no, not in the dirty minded way, but these bags are always in these things and they have a billion, million parts. And that's why it's called a fun bag. Hashtag fun bag. And since I know you wanted to know, these are the contents of the fun bag. Um, let's see here, these look like things that would be holding up the shelves inside. Now I've got some wood dowels, and and then this one has like four screws in it. That's a, That one has two, that's a good use of that. Um, this has a ton of those things, those are fun. And then there's, there's just a bunch of stuff in here. We'll, we'll go over uh, little parts as we go, but really these, these types of builds are just a matter of following the instructions and taking your time. So that's what we're gonna do and just show you guys 
uh, as we go how it looks. One thing I recommend doing is getting your parts spread out and getting them close to where you have access to everything and keep the instructions kind of all together. So here in the kitchen again, I guess it's proving to be great because I have the counter and then I have all the parts kind of spread out into the room. And I have all these with the bags facing up so I can identify them. They are all marked. So HH or II, JJ, etc. And then I'm just gonna go step by step in the instructions here. I'm gonna spare you guys the boring overview of every single part. And I'm just gonna kind of show you, you know, how this part goes in, show you how to install uh, these components here and, and kind of overview the stuff that is the hardest or the difficult spots during the build. So the instructions do call for a Phillips screwdriver and you can use this and I do recommend it for some of the components, but it's also good to have a cordless screw gun um, I have a skill. This is the power core 20 that also can charge other USB devices. So it's pretty cool. Um, I did do a video on this. So check that out if you're interested or you're trying to decide on one of these that you'd like to buy. It's good to have both. Um, there are some things you're going to need to be more careful with, and there's going to be some things where it's easier to just go fast. So there you go. All right. The first pieces that I want to show off, you know, how they install, just because I think a lot of people may have trouble with these. Uh, it does show using a hand a, uh, a hand screwdriver uh, for this instead of using a screw gun. I'm going to install them with a screw gun. I think they end up going a lot faster and you just don't want to over tighten them and shove them through. So I'm going to show these first and how they go in. All right. So I used the screw gun on setting one, I started it with two and it was going a little bit too fast. Um, so you can mess around with your, your settings there and, and get it to where you need it to go. But um, these things don't need to be, you know, totally driven in. You just want them to be snug and they don't need to be over tightened and blown into the into this because they'll just pop out the other side or they'll break the particle board on the top. So that's what you're looking for as far as those being installed. And the next piece I'll show off is these right here. These pieces here are BB listed inside. And basically the idea there is to insert them in. And then when you twist them, there is actually, that's what's actually going to tighten down on these pieces here. So this piece inside of the opening, when you turn it, it's going to tighten down on this head that's coming out of the other side. So that's the idea. Again, super easy to install, not hard to mess up. And the last note on these things here is, you can see the arrow there. I just simply pressed this in with my thumb. It goes in super easy and you want the arrow facing the side of the opening so that when this piece goes in, that's the way it's gonna go in. And then when you tighten it down with the screw, the, the screwdriver, this is going to lock in place. So you want to put it in with the arrow facing towards wherever the opening is for this guy, uh, the AA part to go in. And here's one piece where it's kind of out of order as far as in the instructions, but a bunch of these pieces have these holes ready to go. So there's no reason not to take them and just pop them in place. Now, if this gets off a little bit or it turns, you can easily use a screwdriver to straighten it back up. So you can see this one here, the arrow is facing down. There's the opening. The arrow here is facing this way. And there's the opening there. And one last time to show the pressure that you need to put it in. Set it in place and just lightly press and just kind of click in place. For the next part here on the instructions, it actually shows how you insert those pieces together and it kind of shows a little bit there. So you're gonna, you're gonna put one part in and then you're gonna tighten down this guy right there. So since I have a few of these already ready, I'm gonna show making one of these joints like this. And here's the first long piece that you use. It's actually part T. And uh, again, I'm not gonna show every single connection, but I do wanna show a couple of them. So this one has uh, two of these guys on each end and what's gonna connect into that are the first two pieces that I put together. So these here are gonna actually connect into those ends. So that's the first joint that we'll show. And by the looks of this, you've got your holes facing up. And so you obviously wanna match those together. There's the opening. So this piece is gonna feed into there. So on the inside, that's what we're looking for there. And this piece may move a little bit. So I just pushed it back in with my finger and you'll feel it kind of grab onto the other piece as you turn it. And with these kind of connections, you don't need to wrench it down so tight that it 
that it breaks through or anything like that. You just want to get it to where it's 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 holding onto the piece, and that's all you need to do. I know it's not going to be fine woodworking. Uh, if that's what you want, then you need to build <laughs> something from scratch. But that's the type of joint that this uh, creates. instructions it shows to attach these two pieces to that one but it shows the bottom piece upside down so you can't tell which part has that track in it so I skipped ahead a few pages and I found this image here that shows me that the circles are facing the rear side of that so now I know which way to orient those when I'm attaching them here so sometimes you got to sneak ahead and figure out because that's a horrible view and it doesn't show you how to attach those this top part together they have this little bracket that's already installed and you want to move it over and we're going to place a screw here and that's going to bolt this part in place and the screws we want to use are two of these little ff screws they are super super tiny so you got 12 more of these guys down from the underside because that's where those little locking rings will be. They'll be on the underside of this piece here. All right, so we've got this thing in the back room now. This is where it's actually going to go. Um, we've got the TV and this is where the piece is actually going to go. So the next step is to start putting together some of the final components. Um, that's what we're going to do. So I'll show you guys the difficult parts that come with getting the doors assembled and getting the drawers inside of it. And if I run into anything, you know, weird or odd, I'll share that as well. Again, we've got this set up here inside. I did bring it in the back room and there's no carpet in here recently. We had to tear it out. It was just super old and gross. So just a concrete floor and there's some glue still in here, but this is where it's going to go. So the next step here on the instructions, we got the, the top of this thing put in the other night. And now we're going to start doing, uh, getting the doors on and it starts with that hardware assembly there. So getting into more of the technical parts of this, um, I'll try to detail as much of it as I can for you guys. And for this part, it wants us using the DD, EE, and HH. So there's your washers, your actual bolts, and then these look like the hardware pieces for those doors to hook on. Now this side here is actually the front of the drawer and it looks like these are the hardware pieces here and the way they want these to attach is they're actually going to go on the front side so this is the part that you'd want to be able to see 
and then onto the back side, I'm going to flip this around. If I plug that into the back side there, you can see the inset. And that's where they want these bolts and washers to go through. It's a nice little inset piece. And then you're going to screw that in like so. The next part is to put the door actually on the track and what it shows is to go past the edge and then roll the door on like this. So once it's on there, it flows uh, freely and feels really nice. The next step here is to get these screws um, through the bottom part of this and then there's a little cap piece and this little cap piece is what's going to lock in the, uh, the door from sliding all the way off. So that's, that's what we're trying to do next. So load the screw on the screwdriver. I'm gonna feed the cap in. I'm gonna hold this in place with my fingers and I'm gonna screw from the bottom with the screwdriver. And there we go. Seems to hold pretty well. And again, its purpose is just to stop that door from being able to slide all the way off. That's really all that's trying to do. I move now to the inside um, of the cabinet, but on the back side of it. So this is the back side of the front door that's on here. And the reason is because I need to get these little clips installed that actually lock it into this bottom track. So let me set up the camera here and I'll show you guys how to do this. All right, the reason you need to install this from the back side once the door is on is because this piece has to go into this track. This track does not go all the way out either end. It's only inside of the base of the cabinet. So this is our goal and it's got some pre-drilled holes in order to put in the screws. These are the screws. These are the little tiny LL screws. And this component here is the KK. Now this is a little tricky to do. I'm holding the door with my arm up top and I got that screw a little bit started in the plywood before I started to screw it in. And that's giving me a little bit of tension here. Not the easiest thing to do. Um, I feel like it would have been much easier to put these on uh, prior to <laughs> hanging the door, but I think this might be the only way that it works out. Out is not perfect. It's actually curved at the top. Uh, so don't expect that to fit perfectly into the opening. Uh, I don't think you did anything wrong if it ends up looking like mine. And I've got the second door installed. Same thing. Um, there's a gap there around the edge. And it does have a little bit of movement, but it, it, it can't come out anymore. And it does slide freely across uh, to where it's closed. And keeping here on the back side of the cabinet before I go back around, these are stopping blocks for the edge of the doors to where they slide. And they've got those holes right there. So basically this will go on the inside to keep this from going too far to the right and putting any stress on that locking bolt that we had on the outside. And then they have you using the RR screws to put those in place. And I believe these were marked with a Z on the package. And the next step looks like we're gonna be putting on those back panels and it wants us to use 42 of these tiny little screws, which I like better than nails, to be honest. They seem to hold those back panel types better. So there's gonna be two back panel parts and that's gonna close in the whole back side of this thing. Got this back piece all screwed in place and uh, I definitely recommend using a screw gun for that like a cordless um, doing it by hand would just take forever so lots of little screws I do prefer the screws over some of these type of things that have little tiny nails nails tend to pop out especially if you have to move the furniture over so that's the next step um, or that step is completed the next step is to get the interior drawers in and this thing is pretty much done Quick shout out here to this AWP pad. I got this thing from Lowe's for like 10 bucks. And just if you need to kneel down on concrete and that's what I'm working on in here, um, these things are amazing. I've had it for a while 
and it's just super awesome. So definitely recommend these if you don't have one for doing projects like this, it is awesome. The last step here in the instructions before we just start setting the shelves in place is these two large pieces here. You're gonna use D and K. You need to put in the last few of these double A pieces. And these holes right here are gonna to be to place some dowels. Now that we've got the main drawers assembled, the last part to do, as far as putting this thing together, is uh, putting these little supports in for each of the shelves. And the ones they included have a nice little rubber tip, uh, at least to keep some grip on there. And these things just pop right in to these pre-drilled holes. So that's the next step. Now, as far as how these install, again, they just pop into place, just like that. You obviously wanna make sure you're in the same opening as you go up. The last thing that they do include in the box is kind of some safety hardware. And the way this is designed is to hook a bracket onto the back of the unit and a bracket onto your wall. Basically, you'd have one on the back of the unit, one on your wall, and then they provide some zip ties to attach the unit to the wall. And where this would be safe would be if you have, let's say you wanna actually set your TV on here, which we don't. There's no reason for me to attach this to the wall. But as far as covering what they've included, You'd be screwing these brackets to the back side of the unit. The other set, and they're all the same, they've got some longer screws. These have to go into a stud. You couldn't just put this into sheetrock, it wouldn't do anything. That's how this works. I'm not gonna go through installing it because I don't need to install it. So this is the way that works. Uh, these are basically gonna loop together and then you're going to You'd go up through one, go down through the other side, and then attach the zip tie and pull it tight. And then this thing cannot pull away from the wall or tip over. All right, everybody, we got this thing installed. I got all my stuff back in it, the switch, the Xbox for the kids, everything is ready to go. So there's how it looks. I think it turned out pretty good. You know, overall for the cost, like I said, this thing is not like solid wood construction. It's not something built one off, you know, by, by someone that's skilled in woodworking, but it works and it's really sturdy. It's easy to place where you need it to place. And, and so far we really like it. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If you bought this thing and you needed to put it together, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments and uh, reach out to us. If you have any questions, uh, a lot of our videos have a ton of stuff going on in the comment thread and just people helping each other out, which is really cool. So anyways, uh, check social media at Tough Guys TV everywhere. And also uh, www.toughguys.tv if you wanna pick up some hats, maybe some shirts soon, or just check out more about what we do. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.